Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 5th May 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. You may also visit the forums page to see live examples of stock analysis using Q systems. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we'll analyze gold and oil using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the market's direction. We'll study market direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study that using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum. You may also visit the traders forum from our website. It is open to the public. And we will look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on chart template. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after displaying the bullish headwind at the very bottom, oil went up for several weeks. When price came to the memory resistance line in that week's market roundup, I had expressed caution. After that, price moved sideways for one week. Next week, price tried to go up but closed lower and below the memory resistance line. At that time, price closed between the support and resistance memory trend lines in the weekly chart. This week, price dropped below the triangle pattern. However, the weekly candle color is yellow, neutral, and the weekly candle shape is indecisive. In the daily chart, price displayed the bearish headwind possible reversal signal and from there pulled back to lower boundary line. Price is being supported by memory support line and also the white and yellow direction lines. Because it is being supported by multiple support lines, we are not going to take any short trade. And the price is coming down for several days. The traffic light candle color on Friday is red. Therefore, we are not going to look for any long trade either. Gold ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, price is coming down. This week's candle color is bearish magenta. The weekly candle shape is indecisive. The relative performance line is showing that it is 
severely underperforming the market. In the daily chart, price is coming down. There are multiple memory resistance trend lines. Until price can cross above those resistance trend lines, you may not consider taking any long trade. On Friday, the day ended with a bearish shape candle. The candle traffic light color is green, bullish. If next week price goes down, gives us a magenta color candle that is not too close to the lower boundary line, then it may give us a trend following go with flow short trade setup. From commodities analysis, we continue with market breadth analysis. We are analyzing market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts along with three pairs of internals, new high-low, advanced decline and up-down volume. Because this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, you may use it for longer term investment decisions and for swing trading but not for day trading. This week, both NASDAQ and NYSE ended with a bullish shape candle. The candle color was neutral, yellow. Overall, NASDAQ is moving up in an uptrend. NYSE is moving sideways for several weeks. Though over longer term, it is in an uptrend as well. The internals are bullish. All the internals went up and all of them closed above zero. Overall, this is painting a bullish picture. One reason for caution may be that both the NASDAQ and NYSE are overbought even in the weekly interval and both of them are at price extreme high. In this market, you may be cautious and avoid buying stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued. Let's have a look at the market ETFs. We are looking at the four ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA, and IWM, all using weekly interval. Overall, all the ETFs are moving in an uptrend. Among them, NASDAQ is outperforming others. We can see that from the relative performance line tilting upward. DIA is the worst performer at this point. Earlier, IWM was the worst performer, but this week, it is outperforming S&P 500. That is shown by the relative performance line tilting upward this week. If we look at this specific week, SPY has a bullish shape and neutral color. QQQ, bullish shape, neutral color. DIA, neutral shape and neutral color and IWM, bullish shape and bullish color. That also shows that this week IWM, that is Russell 2000 ETF, is the best performer. S&P 500 made a new all-time high. QQQ is also at a new all-time high. DIA is not far from that. IWM is some distance away. It outperformed other ETFs this week. If that continues, then it has a chance of making a new all-time high. If we look at the band indicators, we see that SPY QQQ, DIA, 
as well as IWM. All of them are at price extreme high even in the weekly interval. And SPY and QQQ are overbought even in the weekly interval. That also is a sign of caution. You may avoid buying stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued. SPY is near a watermark resistance level. So are QQQ and DIA. If price creates a false upside breakout in any of them, then you may be cautious, protect profit in existing long positions and look for low risk swing trade shorting opportunities. This is another look at the market ETF, this time using daily interval. On Friday, SPY had a bullish shape, bullish color candle, too close to the upper boundary line for us to take any long trend. QQQ also closed Friday with bullish color, bullish shape candle, again too close to the upper boundary line to take any swing long trade at this point. Dow Jones Industrial Average is not in a clear uptrend. Friday's candle color and shape are bullish. It is underperforming the market. Because this is not in an uptrend, we are not going to look for any buy setup. IWM is the strongest one. The relative performance shoot up on Friday. Friday's candle color and shape both are strongly bullish. It is already too close to the upper boundary level overbought for us to take any long trade. On Friday, it opened with a gap up. The weekly was also cyan color. Price in the daily was supported by memory support trend line. Looking at that, you could switch to intraday fine tune chart and look for a gap long day trade setup. IWM with 5 minute Q fine tune real time intraday chart. On Friday, price opened at the blue pivot level just above the green pivot level previous day's high. That was a gap up open. Soon after open, the early range high and low lines form and then on this candle it went up and closed decisively above the early range high. That gave us a signal for gap long day trade setup. You could take the long position at this price level putting stop just below early range low. The early range low was never hit as price went up it covered much more than the risk distance and you could close the trade with a significant profit. One month sector performance. Here we are looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of last five days. The green bar performance of five days before that and the blue bar performance of two weeks prior to that. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any sector coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, most of the sectors went up, 10 sectors went up. Two sectors went down, consumer staples was practically unchanged. This displays a bullish picture of the market at the sector level as well. Energy is the worst performing sector. It went down heavily by more than 4%. However, if we look at QH sector scorecard and heat map, we will see that on Friday, energy sector was one of the best performers. Therefore, it may be the time to book profit on energy sector short positions and 
try to look for buying opportunities. Sector scorecard and heat map. Cyan color represents strength and magenta represents weakness. Looking at the five days period, you can see that currently healthcare and financials are strongest. Healthcare used to be weak earlier. The score was in magenta color and now it is turning into strength. In fact, in earlier market roundup also, I had identified healthcare as a sector that was beginning to go up. And you could start to look for buying opportunities from that time. That was probably based on sector acceleration. That time it was still behind others but it was accelerating and now it is in front of others. It's the best performing sector. You could buy stocks into this sector earlier, well ahead of others based on acceleration. But now also you can look for low risk buying opportunities. It is not too late. It is now the strongest sector. Energy is the weakest one over most of the review periods. It is the weakest sector. However, if we expand the recent days, we can see that over one day period on Friday, it is the second best performing sector. That is why I mentioned that if you shorted energy stocks based on its weakness earlier, this may be the time to start booking profit on them and start to look for low risk buying opportunities at the very bottom. Materials is another sector that is strong now. Over two day and one day periods, it is one of the strongest sectors. If you look at the pace column, which shows acceleration, deceleration, then you can see that materials is now the most accelerating sector over five days. You may start to look for buying opportunities here. You may consider buying opportunities in industrials also, that is the second most accelerating sector. These are the trading decisions you can make from the sector level analysis. However, sector level is quite broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, you may drill down into the industry level, buy into strong industries and short into weak industries. Best performing industries, these are 10 of the best performers this week. In Q Technique, we like to buy stocks which are in strong industries and avoid shorting in them. Going by that principle, you will only look for buying opportunities here. You may also look for a certain sector's prevalence in this list of industries. Is any sector dominant this week? Yes, that is consumer discretionary. Six of the 10 best performers are in consumer discretionary. These are housewares and specialties, textiles, home building, home furnishing, consumer electronics, and household appliances. You may note that consumer discretionary as a sector was not one of the best performers. However, six of the best performing industries are in consumer discretionary sector. That is why I mentioned that sector level is too broad. If we only look for sector strength, then we would not look for buying opportunities in these best performing industries. That is why in Q Technique, we always drill down into the industries level and buy into the strongest industries and short into the weakest industries. Other than buying in the best performing industries, we also analyze the accelerating industries. These might be behind others, but they are gaining momentum. And looking into these industries, 
you may catch some of the fundamentally strong stocks right at the time they are starting to go up. There are two consumer discretionary industries in this list. These are housewares and specialties and specialized consumer services. Houseware and specialties is an industry that is in the list of most accelerating industries and it was also in the list of the best performing industries this week. You may use QH to drill down into this industry and look for fundamentally strong stocks that are starting to go up. Let's have a look at the best performing industries using QH. These are shown by cyan color under 5 day period. You may take a special note of the industries that were weak earlier. The score was in magenta color and now turning cyan like houseware and specialties. This may give you buying opportunities at the very bottom. Steel is another industry that was weak earlier, magenta score and now turning into strength. The same is true for textiles industry. If you want to look for the most accelerating industries, you may sort the list using paste column. The most accelerating industries are again shown by cyan color under the paste column. Housewares and specialties is one that is the most accelerating industry at this time and it is also one of the best performers. Let us drill down into the industry. In QH we have two stocks in the housewares and specialties industry. Both of them are optimally valued. You can instantly recognize that from the cyan color score under valuation column. These two stocks are in strong and accelerating industry. Both are having optimal valuation. They both pay decent dividend as well. You may look into their technical charts to see if they are giving low risk buying opportunities. You can open the charts in Q Global by clicking the chart icon. This is TUP using Q at a glance template. You can see that in the weekly chart it has displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal. The candle shape is bullish. The color is neutral. On Thursday, in daily chart, it displayed a bullish headwind signal. In fact, if you apply the unambiguous checklist for bullish headwind long trade setup, it seems on Thursday, all the conditions were met and you could take a long trade in TUP on Thursday using the extreme reversal headwind trade setup. On Friday, the stock went up. It has probably covered the risk distance in one day. You could book profit if you wanted to, at least partial profit, or you could hold on to it and wait for it to hit the next resistance, that is the memory resistance that is above current price level. That would be your logical initial profit target. TUP gave a bullish headwind reversal long trade setup on Thursday. I would not like to take a long trade at end of Friday. Now if the stock goes up, breaks above the memory resistance line, then tilts down and goes up again, then that will give us a trend following go with flow long trade setup. The first possible trend following long trade setup after this long decline. If you didn't take the bullish headwind long trade setup, then you may wait for the 
trend following long trade setup that may appear next. The second stock in the houseware and specialties industry is NWL. It went up by 16% this week. Let's have a look at its technical charts. This is NWL. In the weekly chart, NWL had a watermark support level. Price tried to go below that and then reversed with extreme bullish pressure in the weekly chart this week. The weekly candle color turned cyan bullish. It also displayed a bull release signal and it could close above the memory resistance line. In the weekly chart, NWL turned bullish. In the daily chart, earlier price was moving in a downtrend and then on Friday, it gapped up at the open, then continued to go up and closed above the memory resistance line and also above the yellow direction line. You may watch to see how price moves in next couple of days. If it can break above the high of Friday's high, you may consider taking a breakout long trade, putting stop just below the low of Friday's candle. If you take a long position in that way, you may be watchful of the next memory resistance line and see if price is able to break out of that or is price reversing back from that resistance trend line. Instead of taking a long position right now, another approach would be to wait for price to break out of the next memory resistance. There is no other memory resistance nearby. There is one very far away. Therefore, if this memory resistance is broken and then price comes down, goes up again, that will give as a very low risk trend following go with flow long trade setup. You may keep an eye for that. Worst performing industries of this week, just like you would buy into strong industries, you would like to protect profit in any long position you may have in these worst performing industries and also look for shorting opportunities. Over five day period, Energy is the worst performing sector that is also reflected in the worst performing industries of the week. Three of the worst performers are in energy sector. These are oil and gas drilling, oil and gas exploration and production, and integrated oil and gas. As I mentioned earlier during sector analysis, on Friday the sector strengthened rapidly it accelerated and this may not be the best time to look for shorting opportunities in energy stocks instead you may look into buying opportunities momentarily i will analyze some of these energy industries and see which of them may give potential buy setups another industry that is very weak now is broadcasting. A few days ago, based on live analysis, I shared a possible short trade idea in one of the broadcasting stocks. Let us have a look at that post from our traders forum. If you visit our homepage, superiorprofit.co, from there you can use the forum button to access our traders forum. It is open to the public. This is the post I shared on the broadcasting industry stock. Let us have a look at that. I shared it three days ago on 2nd May around 3 p.m. EST. I usually include all the live snapshots of Q360 degrees analysis, that is analysis of the industry rotation, stock 
fundamental and peer scorecard and also technical charts. This is how it looked at that time. The broadcasting industry weakened and became one of the worst performers right on that day. Looking to the right, you can see that the industry was stronger earlier. The base columns were also showing that the industry was decelerating. In terms of fundamentals, the stock SSP was one of the overvalued stocks. That is indicated by the magenta color score under valuation column. Secondary valuation was also in magenta color showing that it was overvalued. The stock was overvalued and the industry was starting to roll over with deceleration. This was the time to look into the technical charts to see if there was a low risk shorting opportunity. I attach the technical chart snapshot as well. This is how the at a glance template looked like. The weekly displayed a bearish headwind signal at the very top and right after that it broke below the memory support line. At the right edge the weekly candle color was magenta, backdrop candle color was bearish the shape was also bearish. In the daily chart, price again displayed the possible reversal signal, bearish headwind signal. Since then, price couldn't go up. Instead, at the right edge, price broke below the daily memory support line. That was giving us a low risk breakout short entry opportunity. This happened with extreme high bearish pressure. And at price extreme high as well. That was giving us a breakout short trade setup at the very high price level. How did the trade work out? Let's have a look at this stock as of today. SSP using Q at a glance template. I shared the breakout Entry idea based on this day scandal, Thursday scandal. On Friday, price went up a bit. However, the daily traffic light candle color is remaining red, bearish. The weekly ended with an indecisive shape candle with both upper as well as lower tails. The candle color is remaining bearish, magenta. If you took the short trade based on the Thursday's analysis, your stop would be just above recent high. You could probably put it just above the memory resistance line. And your initial profit target would be lower boundary. Neither the target nor the stop has been hit. Therefore, if you took the short trade on Thursday, you are still in the trade. Decelerating industries. These were stronger earlier, now losing strength fast. If you had any long position in them, you might consider booking or protecting profit and you may start to look for shorting opportunities. In QH, the most decelerating industries are shown by magenta color under base column. This is where you may look for shorting opportunities at the top. Of special interest may be the industries that were strong earlier. The score was in cyan color and now turning magenta over five day period and where the pace is also in magenta color. Automotive retail is one of them. Internet services and infrastructure is another. Soft drinks is also another industry that is decelerating fast. You may look for shorting the top opportunities in these industries. If you do that following Q technique, you would look for the short setups only in fundamentally weak stocks. That is stocks that are overvalued or where the stock is having 
decelerating earnings growth. As promised, let me have a look at the energy industries. This week's worst performing industries are shown by magenta color under 5 day score. Three of the 10 worst performers are in energy sector. These are oil and gas drilling, oil and gas exploration and production, and integrated oil and gas. If you look at their score, they are some of the weakest industries for many review periods. They are magenta over almost all the review periods. However, if you open the base column, you can see that on Friday, all of them accelerated. Their base score under one day period, all are in cyan. If we open up the strength score, then we can see integrated oil and gas is not strong yet on Friday. The score is still in magenta. However, oil and gas exploration and production and oil and gas drilling. These two are already strong industries and they are accelerating as well. You may highlight both of those rows and click on this multi-select button to drill down into the stocks of both the industries. Because the industries were weak for a while, let me look for value stocks. You may filter for them using the smart filter, the fully charged battery. That will give you all the value stocks in these two industries that are accelerating on Friday. I drill down into some of these industries, there were not many attractive trade setups on technical charts. One stock that I found to be interesting is LPI. This is a value stock because the valuation score is in cyan color, we know that it is a value stock. The next earnings is on 4th August, so earnings is over already for this earnings season. Looking at the performance columns, you can see over 2 day period it went up by 15% and on Friday it went up again by 2.6%. Let's have a look at this chart using Q Global. This is LPI using weekly daily at a glance template. In the weekly, it displayed a bearish headwind at the very bottom. Soon after that, the weekly backdrop candle color turned cyan. After that, it gradually came down. However, couldn't go much below the watermark support level, the watermark that was created by the bullish headwind signal. Our trading decisions are made at the right edge. This week, the stock went up sharply. The weekly backdrop candle color is cyan, bullish, and the candle shape is also bullish. In the daily chart, price displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal on this day. Since then, price has not been able to close below that. Price was below multiple memory resistance lines. On Thursday, I think after earnings, it shoot up strongly but closed just below the memory resistance line. And on Friday, it ended the day with a bullish shape, bullish color candle and it could close above the memory resistance line and also above the yellow direction line. The next resistance line is this memory line which is quite far away. If the stock continues to go up next week, you may consider buying it as a breakout candidate at the very bottom. The stock was at price extreme low, it is still at price extreme low, therefore if the stock goes up, it will give you the opportunity to buy a value stock 
at a very low price level and the stock is in an industry that was weak before but is accelerating now. Those were the regular topics. Let me summarize. The market is bullish. Broad indices are going up. Market internals are all positive. All went up from previous week. The market ETFs are also strong. Market is bullish. However, it is also overbought even in the weekly interval. Therefore, you may be cautious while buying stocks, may avoid buying stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued. Market is bullish, therefore it may be better to look for buying opportunities. Those will have higher probability of success. As I mentioned in the previous market roundup also, there are watermark resistance levels near three of the market ETFs that is SPY, QQQ and DIA. If the price can create false upside breakout, then you may start to look for shorting opportunities. Now is not that time yet. The sector level is also bullish. Most of the sectors went up. Energy was the worst performer over 5-day period. However, on Friday, it accelerated heavily. You may avoid shorting energy stocks now and see if you are able to find low-risk buying opportunities in value stocks in energy sector. Whatever be the market condition using Q360 degrees technique, you can always find buying or shorting opportunities with high probability and attractive reward risk ratio where you align the forces from industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.